Hey everybody, welcome back to Modeling from the Instance Chair. This is episode 6 of the uh, motion picture smoothie build that I've been working on. Um, let me say, I apologize, it's been such a long time since I put out a video. It's been about uh, three weeks now. Um, unfortunately, due to the economy and everything that's going on, some people get to stay at home. Me, I get to travel a lot more, um, which is good and bad, but... Uh, it takes me away from my modeling project, but uh, I am determined that we are going to finish this build. So um, I think uh, when I left last time, I had finished doing all of my uh, my changes as far as uh, the uh, shapeways parts and the paragraphics uh, inserts. And uh, I think uh, we're at the point now where we're about ready to start looking at doing some lighting. Um, or at least starting to lay out our lighting plan and uh, figuring out how I want to light this model up. Um, so give me a couple minutes, put you on the table, and we'll get to work. All right, guys. So we got uh, all of our completed parts here. Um, I've just kind of been looking at them. I've been cleaning them up a little bit. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, how we're going to uh, do the spotlights on this. And uh, I've done Rayathon lighting. I've done it on my uh, 1350 Enterprise, which is over here. And uh, I want to do it again on this one. Um, what I did for my last one as far as getting um, all the spotlights figured out was there's a uh, template which is available on uh, ianlawrencemodels.com. That's I-A-N-E-N, lawrencemodels.com. Um, I'll try to put a link below. But uh, this is sized by default. You can see the one inch up here. Uh, this is sized for the 1350, so you can go to the website, download the print off, and it'll work perfectly for the 1350. It's what I used for my 1350. Um, but it gives you all your templates for uh, all your spotlight areas. So you just cut these out, and uh, it even gives you your, your lines for where to line it up to the grid lines. Um, and you, you line those up, and uh, you do your, your light blocking. And... Uh, it gives you a good effect and uh, the, the thing with uh, with this being 1350 is I had to resize it um, and what you see here is I've resized it to fit or work with closely uh, the 1537 scale so I had to downsize it just a little bit um, if you're uh, on the Facebook page Star Trek Modelers Group uh, if you want to get a hold of me just shoot me a, a message and I'll send this file to you already changed if you want to get the file yourself and um, work on resizing it to your liking, uh, because you get this, if I send this to you, you may want it to be a little bigger, you may want it to be a little smaller. It's, it's up to personal taste as to how big you want the spotlights to be, uh, how much of the area you want them to, to light up. So um, if you want to personalize them, you can go to ianlawrencemodels.com. He's got the templates on there. He's also got templates for uh, light boxes too for your, uh, for your windows around your saucer edge. Uh, if you want to do light boxes for that. I'm not doing light boxes. Um, I'm just going to uh, to uh, fill these windows in with um, um, some clear uh, acrylic and uh, that way we'll get the, the light diffusion that I need. Um, so what you do is you get this template and you cut these parts out and um, you basically like I said you've got the grid line here and it shows you where to line it up at. And let's put this piece in place so we can see what we're looking at here. So you just kind of center this up on that grid line. Now obviously you're going to put this on the inside. So what you're going to have to do is uh, take this and typically what I do is now what I did in the cells I showed you, I just took a piece of tape and cut it, but uh, I think I'm going to redo those, and I'll show you why here in a minute. But uh, if you want to, some, some people like fine, crisp, clear lines when they do their, um, their spotlights. I like it to be a little shady around the edges. That way it looks, to me, more, it looks more natural that way because your light's not going to be even all the way around this if it's true lighting. Um, you're going to get a little fade to it. Um, so what I do is I take a piece of tape and tape it on there and I will hold this up to the light to where I can see the light coming through here and I can see where that grid line is 
and I will just tape this in place. And if you want to double check to see it, you just flip it around and hold it up to the light. And you're going to see where that piece of paper is through your plastic here when you hold it up to your light. And uh, you just get it positioned. You know you reposition it if you need to until you get it where you need it. I'm going to pull that off, but I'll fix that. And uh, once you've got it in position that you think looks good, you can leave it there. And what I'll do is I will come in with uh, my black primer here. Now, I had been using the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover. Uh, the problem I'm having with this is it does not sand well at all. Um, it just tends to gob up and it, it really, I don't know if it's because it bonds the plastic so well or what, but it's just impossible to sand this stuff out once you paint it. Um, and thinner doesn't help at all either. It just tends to make it even messier. So um, what I'm going to try for this this time is I'm going to try the uh, sandable primer. And uh, it's just an automotive primer. So I'm going to try that and hopefully uh, that'll, you know, in case I, I get any mess, mess, uh, mess ups or, or mix ups, I can just go back and clear that up hopefully a little easier than uh, that 2X primer. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. So let me get this uh, light blocked and we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, so I've done my uh, first round of light blocking and uh, you can see I left this a little loose because I wanted paint to get around these edges. I didn't want a crisp line here. Um, I wanted this to kind of fade just a little bit to give it that uh, illusion that it's being lit from the back here to the front. Um, same thing on the back side here. Um, with uh, this light in the back that's going to light up the Enterprise logo. I left that a little bit loose on the far end so that way hopefully paint gets in there a little bit and just fades it a little bit. So let's peel this off and see how it's turned out. And of course the, the thing about this is uh, if it doesn't quite do what you want you can always take it off and I see I've got a little bit where the tape was so I'll have to clean that up with some sandpaper but uh yeah to clean this up a little bit with some sandpaper the other thing I should say too while I'm thinking about it I'm sanding this here is you want to make sure that you prepare the surfaces um, on both sides because if uh, sometimes in these molds um, when they make these you'll get a little bit of an imperfection where uh, maybe the uh, plastic that they're, they're using um, didn't quite mix the same everywhere and it's not even. So um, what I usually do is I just make sure I, I do some sanding on this on the inside and the outside of this. And this is why I wanted to use a sandable primer. So that way I could go back if uh, I make any mistakes and clean it up. A little bit here. And also sometimes the sanding can help blend it in. Blend it in just a little bit. So. Um, when I was talking about uh, cleaning, up, cleaning this up a little bit, because if you leave paint in these grid lines, um, and some people will do it this way, but I, I don't like that enhanced of a grid line when the lights are on. Because um, what will happen is when you light this, if you leave paint in these grid lines, you'll get an, it'll show that black outline of the grid lines. Some people like that. I, I don't really want to do that. Um, I'll probably do a light wash to it later just to give it a little bit of a grid line when I light this from the back. But I don't want it to be completely blacked out on the grid lines. Uh, but that's my preference. Like I said, some people will do it that way. I've seen it done that way and it, and it looks good. Um, Again, it's just your preference. Do you want to leave it that way? And um, how much emphasis you want on those grid lines when you backlight it? A little bit here that I need to clean up. But you 
want to make sure that the surface back here is even. I've got a little bit of a part right piece right here that I missed. That's what I'm sanding. Because if it's not even, um, you're not going to get even light all the way across it. And you're going to end up with a spot that looks out of place. So just to um, give you an idea what we're working on here. I apologize, I keep having to walk away because I packed all this stuff up when I went on my trip. I was going to try to do this on the road um, and it didn't work out too well. So um, let's see what we can show you here. Uh, I'm going to this light off. But you can see how that's going to shine through on the back there. Maybe a little bit. All right, you can see that outline there. And then on the front here, you can uh, make out a little bit how that's blacked out right there where my outline is. So that's what you um, can do with these templates is just block them out, put them on the inside. Turn this light back on. And uh, do your light blocking. And then, uh, like I said, if you have to, like I'm gonna have to go back and work on this edge a little bit more because it's still just a little uneven and I didn't sand it properly uh, before I did it. And if it's too bad, I'll just completely sand this off and redo it. But hopefully I can just work with what I've got here. But again, that's why you wanna primer that you can sand because uh, if you can't sand it you're gonna have a hard time working with this and getting it the way you want it but yeah I think it's pretty I think it would be pretty good so but uh we'll do that with this part and um, they also give you I might have to completely take this off because I wasn't planning on doing this pendant lighting um, but it'll, it'll say uh, not the pendant but the neck light um, but it gives you the lines here to, to line it up with your windows. Um, again, you're going to do this from the inside just like I did this one. Um, all this Raython lighting, you're going to light block from the inside. Uh, you've got your forward top saucer, which is going to go on here. And uh, we're going to line it up and light block that again. We'll put it on the inside here. And I'll hold it up to light and get it lined up where I need it. And then we'll paint that and get that done. Um, and we also have the uh, light blocking for the back here. Uh, for the insignia back there. So we'll get that done. It also has your pennant lights, which again I'm going to have to remove this uh, primer I've got on here in order to do this. But basically this line on your pennant light paper here lines up with uh, the back edge of your uh, sensor here. So it's going to light up something like something like that. So light block that. Uh, then it's also got your nacelles. It's got your inner and your outer to help you get those done. Um, I, I, and that's why I said I was going to redo this because I've got mine back a bit from what this is uh, indicating and then maybe it's right maybe it's wrong but um, I like the way this turned out with my 1350 so I'm just going to stick to uh, the way that this was and uh, I'm going to redo that on each nacelle and uh, get that done and uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to be working on um, while I've got the time before I have to head out again um, hopefully it won't be so long before I can get another episode out, but, um, well, we're, I'm going to work on that. I'm also going to, uh, try to start on, um, uh, placing my LEDs and, uh, typically what I do with the LEDs <clears throat> and these can be, uh, these, this LED strip can be cut pretty small. 
I'll show this uh, when I when I get done placing it. But I'm gonna cut these into individual strips, and I'll place each strip a strip of this in front of each window around the saucer to get it lit. That way I make sure I've got each one of these windows uh, lit up good. But uh, I'll cut this here. And as you can see, I can cut these uh, right there. So I'm going to cut it. That will give me three of these lights. Uh, this is double density. And uh, we're going to stick one in front of each set of windows. And I'm going to wire these up. And we'll have our wiring for the windows for well part of our <laughs> part of our lighting for the saucer windows. But uh, once I get that done, I'll come back probably next episode because I want to keep these episodes short um, to make sure I get something out to you uh, each week if possible. So what I'm gonna work on right now just for this episode, like I said, is just the Raython lighting. Uh, work on getting that done, and uh, when I come back, we'll um, take a look at what I've done as far as getting these LEDs in on the next episode. But uh, until then, keep modeling.